Hi you everyone. Just the standard rainbow wave there because I've run out of bloody ideas to do with the rainbow, haven't I? Anyway, that just been hatched. That is this chick is literally about eight hours old. Put that back under the heat lamp. So this video is going to be sort of um, some summer randomness things that has been going on. Let's go. Well it's a beautiful sunny day and life doesn't get better than this does it eh? Picking strawberries, homegrown strawberries and these are just so much sweeter. Oh ho. Just so much sweeter, it's off the scale than the shop ones. Stop eating the strawberries to get a word. Hopefully, these ones will make it into the kitchen. I'm going to go and sit in the corner where no one can see me. See you later. So, last year I had this plan of growing loads and loads of elephant garlic and selling it out at the front because you can't seem to find elephant garlic for sale in the shops and I like to do things as a bit of a gimmick that's, that's why we sell the rainbow eggs on the stall as well and these gimmicky ideas seem to work really well now let's get one of these up that size of that you wouldn't want one of them up your nose as a walt we'll be selling these on the stall this weekend at two pound fifty each and I feel that that's quite a bargain really now I've got to um, make a chalkboard sign with the garlic on so the people driving past can see it let's get to it now with elephant garlic you tend to get these sort of little nodules can you see them there growing on the side and you can pull them off and they are called garlic corms and you can actually plant them to get a bulb but it will take a good couple of years for a bulb like that to form from a corm but did you know these corms they fetch a fair price on eBay people are willing to um, pay like I think, I think last year we sold them for about four pound for about thirty. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Obviously, when we did sell them on eBay, we absolutely undercut everyone. So all the customers were coming to us, say, hey, give everyone a bargain, and all. That's what it's all about. Now look. So we'll save all the corns before we get these out on the stall. Now, I always like to set myself challenges and the challenge for today is to make 20 pounds on the stall. Let's see how we get on. Okay, let the challenge let the challenge commence. Ooh. Curious people come by my car. Nick. It's as big as an elephant. We'll come back and check later. Now one of my favourite places to go to during the summer months is a beautiful place called a car boot sale. For those in America, 
they don't sell boots there. It's like a trunk sale. They don't, for those in England, they don't sell trunks, like elephant trunks. Right, so, a beautiful place. It's a tax-free haven, and it don't get better than that, does it? And you're not funding twants to cheat on their wives, are you? For those who don't know what a twant is, it's a cross between a twat and a cut. Matt Handcock. Handcock. Oh, I thought it was hand. I thought it was handcock. Oh, anyway, he promised us he was working hard on the job. boot sale you're probably wondering what I did buy at the boot sale well I'm not one to buy a load of old junk that I don't want but I'll show you what I did buy 50p each a tin can alley in a tin <laughs> a miniature golf in a tin and these little games will be staying in our caravan for anyone to play who wants to come to visit us Well, I missed that one. There, there is actually it's a it's a nine hole golf course in a tin. <laughs> it's time to replenish the stall with some rainbow chicken eggs. We have some broodies, of course. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there's quite a few in here really. Nice green eggs there. Green eggs and ham. Do you remember that book? <laughs> I used to love that book when I was a child. There, it used to be in our library and um, every child would rush to get that book out when I was at school. <laughs> now let's get these cleaned up and boxed up and on the stall. Now it's just gone midday and we're up to seven pounds so far. Because <laughs> she's wearing look at that, look. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, it's it's eight o'clock and um we've failed. I thought I thought right we'll do this video, it'll all work out mm. alright and it'll all be good and we'll get twenty pounds by the end of the day. What a bloody failure, eh? How much we got here then? How much have we got? We made twelve pound fifty today. Right, it's been quiet in the forest today. Yeah, it's been quiet in the forest today. So we're gonna put everything out again tomorrow, which is Sunday, and we'll try and make up the twenty quid that we wanted. Ha ha ha! We was just packing up the stall and I just done that last bit of um, video in, but the the Gurkhas from the army base had just come round on um, like a training thing or whatever, I don't know. And um, they've just brought a load of eggs. So we've made 18 pound, 10 pence today. Hey, two, two pounds short. Well, one pound 90 if you do the maths. Let's cut till tomorrow. So we've set the store up and literally within an hour, we sold enough that made six pounds. So that's 24 pound. 10 pence so I think I have done the challenge haven't I used lot <laughs> I was meant to do it in one day but we've done it sort of in one day and, a, and about an hour <laughs> Every day the sun
Now I must admit that this year is going to be going down to um, one of the worst years for growing. What with the very late frosts that we've had here, loads of pests and bugs and cutworms and God knows what eating the veg and devastating it as well at the beginning. And now we've got blight. Blight's been caused by all the humid wet weather that we've had. I've had to cut down all of my potatoes pretty much. We've only got a couple left that didn't seem to get the blight but the, the blight's just spread like crazy. It, it happened all within like under a week. And I've got tomatoes here as well which are just showing signs of blight. Now I probably shouldn't have planted potatoes near tomatoes but I've done it a few years back and I had great success. Masses of tomatoes, masses of potatoes. But next time I'm going to make sure they've, they've got their distance. The tom tomatoes are showing signs of blight as well. So we're going to try this natural remedy which is one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda or baking soda to two pints of water and a tiny drop of soap or washing up liquid mixed in with that and we'll spray the tomato plants now and try and save them. Now if I lose my tomatoes over there it's going to be like a big slap in the face because we're not going to be able to make loads of pasta sauce. But my tomato days are not over. Casanova. We had tomatoes in the polytunnel and these are doing perfectly well, perfectly unharmed by the blight. And I'll be shutting the door now. It's been open because it's been really hot today but I'm going to shut it to stop any blight spores getting in there. It's craft time on the small holding. Now I've been battling crows since the blinking day I moved in here, which was seven years ago, they keep stealing eggs and it's driving me insane. And no matter what I do, I can't get rid of them. Over the years, I've tried everything, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, we brought these plastic crows and hung them upside down. It worked for quite a while, but now they've seemed to have realised they're not real crows. So I'm now. <laughs> I'm now hot gluing turkey feathers to it and I'm going to paint their eyes in yellow. In, in a perfect world, what you really need is a dead crow, but it's quite hard to come across a dead crow. Let's get that fry in. What you've got to do is make them look as menacing as possible. Go and see if that does the job. I've got two of these crows I'm going to hang upside down. Now, a few years back, we was lucky enough to find a roadkill dead crow and we hung it up over the back and the birds, um, the crows came in and they were circling around and they was absolutely going mad. It was like as if they'd come to the funeral of the dead crow. <laughs> So, if they do the same for this, we'll know it's worked. That's it. That's enough to give it the clan the bloody creeps, isn't it? Right, let's see if they circle. Shop and um, the crows have done a few circles, but I've not managed to catch them on camera. And they do look a little bit distressed, so this this could be the one. This this could give me a break for about a few months until they figure this one out. I've tried everything, so there's there's no point in putting anything in the comments below. <laughs> it really ain't. I've, I've even had um, a CD playing on loop with gunshots and sounds of um, crow distress but that ended up driving us all round the bloody twist <laughs> fingers crossed
Now at this moment in time I'm processing our turkeys from the garden. We no longer want to keep turkeys, we find it too much aggro. And the strange thing is that when a turkey gets old, the meat doesn't get tough on it. So and I highly recommend getting one of these meat grinders and if you freeze the meat and then put it through the grinder it grinds a lot easier. So we've decided to mince all of this turkey up so we can use it in homemade bolognese and the bolognese sauce will be made with tomatoes from the garden as well. So we're trying to be as self-sufficient here as possible as you can see. Hopefully I should get about four tubs of this mince. Now today is the 18th of June and god damn it is hot. It is hotter than me wearing a garlic bra. Right, cut, cut, cut there. The senile old duffer don't even know what bloody month it is. He was meant to say July the 18th. Now, you can tell how far we are behind in this season. Um, I've only just started lifting my onions. And look, some of them are not even ready yet. The tops are not even falling over. But they will be ready to lift in a week's time. I have, I have lifted probably about 20 over there. And I've got them drying out nicely to be stored for the winter. So yes, we are behind still and we're not going to catch up. Now it's history time on the small holding. Now not so long ago I was working in the garden and in the chicken run I could see something shining coming to the surface so immediately I went over there and oh my god look what I found. A very old bottle and on the top of the bottle it says Dr. Struve's Mineral Waters. So straight away I took it indoors and googled it. Now Dr. Struve was born on the 9th of May 1781. Wow. His full name was Frederick Adolf August Struve. And he invented this technique where he turned ordinary water into the same characteristics as mineral water using chemicals. That doesn't sound too good to me, does it? And in 1825, he opened up a spa in Brighton. And he claimed that if you bathed in his spa water, it would be a cure to all. That sounds like a bit of a con man to me, doesn't it? Now, people brought into this, and they was coming from everywhere in their hundreds, queuing in their horse and carriages to bathe in his spa water. Now, this bottle didn't contain his chemically altered water into mineral water. He actually got a well dug that was apparently 150 foot deep it says on the internet and from that well he used to bottle up that water and obviously it was, it was proper mineral water back then wasn't it. Now this bottle of mineral water wouldn't have been cheap back in them days. So the people who lived in this cottage, because this cottage was built in 1797 we do believe, so the people living in here wasn't short of money at all and apparently it was like um, gamekeepers cottages here. So this bottle could be over 160 years old, that is truly amazing isn't it? So sadly that brings us to the end of another video, but what have we learned in today's video? Well, crows are very clever creatures, cleverer than me, but that ain't hard is it? The crows that I have made and that are hanging upside down seem to be working so far, but they're going to figure it out, give it two months time and they'll be back, and then I'll have to try and think of something else. We've also learnt that I look drop dead gorgeous with my garlic bristles, yeah, sleep well tonight, don't have nightmares. We've also learnt that the shit stum, the people running the shit stum, not even their wives can trust them, eh, and that speaks volumes, doesn't it? We don't need them, we really don't, as long as we're kind and nice to each other and help each other out, 
as best as we can, then I think we'll be fine without them. And sharing as well, that's important, always share with others. What else have we learned? Never plant, never plant tomatoes near um, potatoes, hey. Eh? And that spray that I did make is actually working. It seems to have calmed the blight down on the tomatoes and I've trimmed it and all that, trimmed the blight off and the tomatoes seem to be doing very well. Yeah, so I think that's all, isn't it, what we've learned, hey? Eh? There probably is more. Learned that I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's that's been checked. Right. Take care, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Be nice to each other. Be nice to the planet. See you later.